Hello everyone. Over the next few minutes, I will introduce you to the Device Offboarding Manager, a powerful PowerShell-based tool designed to simplify and streamline device lifecycle management across Microsoft Cloud services. As an IT admin managing devices across Microsoft Intune, Autopilot, and Enter ID, I was frustrated by how much time I spent jumping between different portals just to offboard or maintain devices. The constant back and forth felt like a waste of valuable time that could be spent on really, really more important tasks. That's why I created the Device Offboarding Manager, to bring everything together in one place, streamline the process, and finally make it way, way easier and faster. The Device Offboarding Manager simplifies device management with a clean, user-friendly interface that centralizes everything. It streamlines bulk tasks and will save you time on your daily work. The live dashboard provides clear insights into your devices while ready-to-use playbooks handle common tasks automatically. Let me show you how it works in action. Okay, so now I am on my VM and let's start with the GitHub repository of this project. So there is one that explains, I think, almost everything in detail and also has a couple of screenshots but the thing that we need here for this demo is this quick start part. So one thing that's really important, you will need PowerShell 7. If you don't have PowerShell 7 installed on your device, you can install it with Winget, for example, right? There are a lot of guidance by Microsoft to do that. And the second thing that we, le re that we need is the Microsoft Graph authentication module. So I will open the terminal inside this VM. And as you can see on the top, I have PowerShell 7.4.6 already installed. And what I will do is just basically copy and paste what's inside this quick start guide. And the reason why I need this module, Microsoft Graph Authentication, is pretty easy. We need to authenticate to our Intune tenant, to our Android ID tenant, right? So we do that with a official Microsoft Graph SDK PowerShell module. And after installing it, you will be able to install the device offboarding manager script from the PowerShell gallery. So for this, we will just copy and paste the command here. Let me do that here. And then I will just confirm to trust PowerShell gallery and then install the device offboarding manager script onto my device, right? And then the last step is running the script by just typing it and executing the name of the script. But we will first create a new PowerShell session. And after running that, it should open the UI for us. So there it is. And there are a couple of things happening in the background, right? So I have run it and everything that you see inside this UI will run inside this PowerShell session. So you shouldn't close this PowerShell session in the background, right? You can just minimize it. So what happened in the background is, first of all, it did create a log file. So as soon as you run this script, you will be welcomed by this, I call it the home page, right? And there's the side menu on the left. And one of the most important things, because this is a preview, so if you have issues and you give, for example, feedback or create an issue on the GitHub repository, the most important thing that I need from you is the log file, right? And with this click on the logs, it will just do that and open you open the, the log file, right? And it tells me I'm not connected to MS Graph, but I also see that when I look at the sidebar menu. So I click on this connect button and then I have three separate options to log into my tenant. So one thing that you can do is basically use your Intune admin account, for example, or an, an admin account that has sufficient privileges into the services like Entry, ID and Intune, right? But I think most of you will use the other two options, hopefully because those are app registrations. And app registrations are, I think, the most secure way to connect to your tenant. It will give you a way to pinpoint the permissions that you really need for tasks that are running inside this UI, right? And I made it really easy to connect to your 
tenant with this app registration. So there are two ways, either using a certificate, this is something, so if you install a certificate on your device, it will get a thumbprint and you can use that certificate and this thumbprint to uh, connect to your tenant. But you can also use a secret that you will just create in your app registration. So by the way, if you haven't created app registration before, I will not go into detail because, I mean, the video should be short, right? But if you need guidance on that, Microsoft has a lot of details and, and documents about how to create app registration, how to add those, um, the permissions to that app registration, and how to create a secret or even better use a certificate, right? And if you click on each of them, you will have to input your application ID, your tenant ID, and in case of a certificate, you would input the thumbprint of the certificate, right? Or you can, can just import a JSON file that already includes those details. So for this demo, I will use the app registration with SQL. And what I will do is just select the import button and on the desktop there are two files so before opening any json files here let me show you the input of it so inside this secrets.json file is nothing really special there is this app id there's the tenant id and there's the client secret so don't worry the client secret will be not valid anymore as soon as you see this video right but why do I really use an import button? The important thing here, so in the past when I create PowerShell scripts or tools and gave you an option to use a app registration, you would have to input those details that you see inside the JSON every time you run your script. So just to streamline it or make it easier for you, you have that option to create a JSON beforehand. So this is the JSON format. We just have key and value pairs, right? So app ID and then the value, tenant ID and then the value, and then the client secret and value, right? And when I select the secrets JSON, it will just import those details, right? And just to complete this both steps, you can also use the certificate JSON, right? So you would again prepare a JSON that looks like this, and this time, instead of a secret, you would have to um, define the thumbprint in this JSON, right, for the certificate. And what I can do is just connect now. So pressing on connect, it will now go straight to your app registration and then it will connect via your secret with your tenant. And then you will hopefully see those details here on the left in the sidebar menu where you can see your tenant name, you will see your domain, and you will see also your tenant ID. So basically, if you look inside the logs now, you should be able to see a lot of more details. We are now connected to my tenant, to my lab tenant. I see that some kind of dashboard is, is already updated. Right, so we will look at that in a second. So after we connected now successfully to our tenant, we can proceed with the dashboard feature here. And this is something that's being updated as soon as you click on the button. So let me just go back to the home button and then back to the dashboard button. So the data here is in real time. So everything you every time you click on a dashboard button, the script in the background will go into your tenant and then grab your devices from Intune, Autopilot, and TriID. And you will also see a lot of data here, but basically what, what I did implement this dashboard inside this tool is just to have some kind of visualizations regarding your devices and also like to see the platform distributions, like how many days ago your devices had a successful sync with your Intune tenant, for example, right? So my tenant, um, I have 62 devices in Android, but out of the 62 devices, 55 devices hadn't had a successful connection to Android, right? And I have 55 personal devices and I have seven corporate devices. So this gives you something of an overview of, about your devices. 
But the really interesting thing is happening here inside this device offboarding part. And what you can do here is you can search by device name or serial number. So let me just search for one of my devices, which is macOS host, and it will go into your into the services, enter ID, Intune, and also autopilot. By the way, autopilot makes no sense for macOS, but it will skip that part. So what I could do is now check and select those devices and click on offboard devices, right? So I will not do that with the macOS host because I need that device, so I can't really offboard that. But let me deselect that now. There's also an option called bulk import. And with that, you can select a CSV file, which is really handy. And what it does now is it will open the CSV file and search for things inside that, right? So I have here two examples, two devices with different serial numbers, of course, and I can select the serial number inside this selection here and then search for those devices. And then I get other devices here, right? And just to show you that the CSV file, let me open that in Notepad, is really easy. It's just one serial number per row. So if you want to bulk offboard devices, you can just create a CSV file out of this device names or serial numbers. In this case, I use serial numbers. You could also use your device names, of course, and then you can just bulk import that. You can either select one or multiple devices and then click on offboard devices. And I want to show you one more important thing here, and that's let's just select the Windows devices for this demo. And then you will see this confirmation pop up because this is important. You can't undo the deletion of an object, an Intune or Enter ID. Those things are final. So as soon as you click on confirm offboarding inside this pop up, those devices that you've selected beforehand will be deleted from Enter ID, Intune and if they're available, also in autopilot. And one feedback that I got really, really early in this um, development of this project was, what happens with the BitLocker key or with my firewall key from those devices? Because those keys are saved in Intune, right? If you look in the Intune and device objects, there's a recovery key option for devices where the encryption is enabled. And if you delete a object from Intune and Enter ID, those BitLocker recovery keys are deleted as well. You can't find them again. So what you can do here in this tool, it will display you the BitLocker recovery key. You can copy that key and then save it somewhere inside your nodes or I don't know, your, your asset management, right? So what I can do is now confirm offboarding and will start the deletion of that device. So I think we are ready to go and delete that device. This should be one of my test VMs, hopefully. And uh, let me click on confirm offboarding. So what it will do now is delete those devices from Entry ID, Intune and Autopilot. But something that I really like to work on is automation, right? And automation means in this case, playbooks. So what I did was to create in this case, I have just one right now, but they will follow up again with a lot of more playbooks. I have currently one playbook that will list you autopilot devices that are not in Intune. So basically you have registered those devices in, the autopi in autopilot, but they have never been enrolled to Intune um, or they have been deleted from Intune, but not from autopilot, right? Just to give you a better understanding of what those objects are in autopilot. But again, there's a lot of more playbooks that I'm currently working on. And I will just show you one more thing, which is inside the GitHub repository is a folder called playbooks. And inside there is a file called playbook one PS1, right? So that's the script that's behind the playbook button here that's already implemented. So as soon as I click on it, it will run and it will display the results. 
So what it did in the backend was it downloaded this playbook underscore one dot ps1 from this GitHub repository, and then it will it will run locally on your device, obviously, and then it will display those results on the screen. As soon as I go and implement the other playbooks here, every playbook will have their own file inside this playbooks folder in the GitHub repository for you to, to, to check what's, what's really, what really happens. I think that's really everything that I wanted to show you.